a lineup that Purdue has been working with and is looking for some answers after their five to loss to Wisconsin earlier this week. Yeah, and Purdue will be looking to snap a three-game losing streak here today in East Lansing. Michigan State in white, Purdue in gold. Gardner and white in the back, kind of going back and forth here. And that's going to be a pass right over to Reagan Cox going through. Purdue defense keeping it tight on the Spartans. Kaler with the ball now, but it got taken away by Abigail Roy for Purdue. And look for Purdue to get off of a fast start. They got an early goal against a great and dominant Wisconsin team, a, a team that's very disciplined in the opening minutes. But Purdue was able to snatch one, I think, in the first five minutes of that match. Absolutely. A dominant team coming out, and they're definitely hungry, looking for some in-conference wins after their loss to Wisconsin. That was a really tough one for them. Playing some tight defense right now, Boilermakers, as Samantha White has it in the back. And Purdue's just had the unfortunate uh, schedule so far in conference play. And, and credit to the Boilermakers, they have had to play some really hard opponents, um, opening with a game to Northwestern and then a game against Wisconsin. Definitely some touch ma tough matches there. Sargent was passing it out to Kaler there, just went a little further than she wanted. Spartans trying to get back to the Purdue net, but it looks like Purdue defense is keeping it very tight, not gonna let the Spartans get a lot of chances early. Sydney Boudreaux now fighting with some Spartan players for that ball. Cameron Evans is going to get that ball, get it to the Purdue side, kick out, and Michigan State throwing it in. And we're now a little over halfway through the 2022 soccer season for these teams. And MSU have stuck with their same lineup, hoping to to sharpen up the forwards a little. That through ball was no good, and Purdue looked to break. Purdue getting it, a slide. The field may be a little slippery now from this rain. The Spartans and Boilermakers are battling it out in the middle of the field now, but the Spartans, Cox is gonna come away with it, getting a nice pass up to Lauren DeBow. And a great one-two play there. Really nice pass there to Kaler. Just went a little high over that goal, but a really good look there by Lauren DeBow to Courtney Kaler. And the Sergeant to Bow matchup on that side will be something to watch, along with Reagan Cox, who has the ability to get forward on that right hand side for the Spartan defense. As Purdue will start off in a 4 3 3, hoping to not allow the Spartans to get out a goal early. Campbell's kicking it out, gets it out, but Michigan State. Gets the ball back, Sargent with it now, getting a little double team there, passing it back to Cox. Cox is gonna fall back to her defenders and midfielders. White coming up with it now to Kaler. Kaler finds Sargent. Sargent goes to Debeau. Debeau gets it, saves it, and then kicked almost out, but it's gonna stay in as Sargent comes up to help Debo, but the ball is out. We'll go out for a corner kick. And that was a true test for the center ref today on whether he was gonna call that foul. How far is he gonna allow the players to battle it out? It was a physical matchup against Iowa for the Michigan State Spartans in their last matchup, but maybe more of a tactical one here today. The Spartans have definitely shown a lot of physicality in these matches. Looking to see some more of that today. But the Boilermakers are coming out strong, especially with a, the really tight defense they've been holding. The corner kick is in and missed. The header missed there by Celia Graynor. And the ball's going to go out. And that's going to be Purdue's ball as Kimball will kick the ball out for her team. And Purdue on that corner kick had all of their players back, not even a forward stayed up top. That just goes to show that they are really putting defense at the forefront of the early minutes for their squad. Definitely after such a rough game against Wisconsin, 
Purdue is going to look to keep a tight defense, not let as many goals get back into the net. As the ball goes out there, Michigan State throwing it in. Ruby Diodati throwing right over the head of Boilermaker to her teammate, but it looks like it's going to get kicked out, called out on Purdue. And Purdue thought they had a goal kick there, tried to shepherd the ball out and not let Evans get a touch on it. Must have taken a deflection, and now the Spartans have another corner kick of the day, the first opening minutes. The kick is in, and it is grabbed out of the air by Kimball. Nice look there. As Kimball's looking now, find one of her players, and she gets it out to Lauren Holleran. Stopped up by the Spartans. And in order for Purdue to be successful today, they need to develop a little bit more chemistry within their forwards. Uh, the back line, or this lineup, I should say, has been switching up the past couple of games. So within these minutes, they need to prove to their coach that they have a little bit of chemistry and that they can work together before substitutions can be made. And honestly, also to get off to a fast start. They did get off to a fast start, like we mentioned, against Wisconsin, but then slow it down. Sometimes they allow their opponent to grow back into the game as they look to create an attack here around the center circle. Budish is going to take the ball, pass up to Dunaway. And a great overlapping run. Boudreau now getting triple teamed by the Spartans, and the Spartans are going to get it away from Kozel as Gaynor takes it out. Keeping the ball back as the Spartans start to reset. Not a bad sequence of play from the Boilermakers. They just need to keep the ball a little closer to them and not allow the Spartans to take advantage of a bad touch or a bad pass. Absolutely. Spartan defense is something that has been a brick wall this season. They've only, Spartan defense and Kozel have only allowed four goals this entire season so far. Has been a brick wall indeed. And if a player gets sloppy, that defense is going to get the ball away and steal it whenever they see the chance. Big kick out there by Cox but the Purdue Boilermakers are going to get it out as Kaler tries to get it back. Kaler up to Sargent. Sargent being guarded, gets past her defender to get it. Oh, and a nice shot there by Celia Gaynor, but it was just going to be a little too slow and a nice pickup by Kaylee Kimball. And you see the Spartans already kind of getting a taste of that final third, something that they really were frustrated with against their match against Ohio. They only had seven shots, four on goal, compared to their last couple matchups where they registered 11 or 13 shots on goals. They look to attack here, here comes 2v5. Debo went up, but just had too many defenders on her, and that's going to get kicked out as Sargent and Duarte fight for that ball. Boilermakers are going to come out with it now, racing Duarte and Cox. That's going to be out on Purdue. Ref having a word with Kayla Budish. Kind of telling her that he's going to be watching for those. Though he didn't call it this time, he might call it next time. Definitely seeing some physicality from both teams, and the refs are going to be keeping an eye out for that. Kayla, nice look to Debo, but that is going to be stopped by Sabrina Blount. And already the third corner for the Spartans today in the first 10 minutes. Corners are something the Spartans have been seeing a lot of as the ball goes, and it looks like it was bouncing off. Looked like that bounced off Duarte, so Michigan State's going to get to throw that ball in. Excuse me, a throw in. <laughs> to Debo, to Cox, back to Debo playing a little bit. Duarte is being very physical today as the ball is going to be called out on Purdue. Oh, excuse me. looks like it was called out touching MSU, and Purdue's going to get to throw that in. Debo very unimpressed, kind of staring at the AR, wondering either why she didn't get the call or how it's a Purdue throw. Either way, Spartans regain possession. Kaler finds Debo in the corner, and Debo went to go right back to the center, but that's going to be kicked out by Purdue defense. Nicole Kev Kevzia right there. 
being a strong defender today for the Boilermakers. As Cox comes with the ball now, but is going to get taken over. Little back and forth right here as Debo racing with Woodbeck to get it. Debo, oh, and a nice try there by Sargent to get that ball in. A nice look there from Debo, but the Boilermakers were there and on the rebound, just missing the goal a little bit. Cameron Evans, just a little off tar target there. And she was in a good position there to take that shot. Not a bad idea at all. Goal kick for Purdue now. Kaylee Kimball sends it out. Racing for the ball now. And Matthews is going to take it over, but kicking it right back out for a Spartan throw in. In the back now. White and Kaler, excuse me, Gardner, sending it back to Kozel. White racing forward now. Looking up, trying to push past her defender there a little bit and is going to kick it out for mm -hmm. a Purdue throw. And that was Kayla Budish there defending White, and she is strong. She was the one the ref was kind of having a word with. She's going to be an aggressive defender today. Not a bad sequence from MSU, but maybe we'll try and look for a switch there instead of letting it go out and Purdue now have possession. But not for long as MSU retains it again. Kaylor with the ball now, sending it back to White. White finding Gaynor on the side. Trying to look for that pass right now as the Purdue defense is not making it easy for the Spartans today. Gainer coming up with it now. Pass out and across, and it's going to roll out of bounds on the Spartans. As we take a look here at Jeff Hostler posting a 16-6 and 6 record with the Spartans in his second year of his tenure, kind of giving directions to his team. But MSU has come out very composed in these opening minutes, something that they weren't able to do against Iowa, and Iowa kind of rattled them a little bit and made them a lot of really frustrated. Sargent just saving it there, but Purdue is going to get that ball back. As Budish now trying to fake out her defender almost. Getting it across to teammate Matthews. As Matthews sends it up. Finds a player, and it looks like it was going to bounce off Ruby Diodati right there. As Purdue will have their first corner of the day. And really the first look at goal that Purdue might have. The closest they've gotten to Kozel so far as Emily Matthews is getting ready to take the kick for the Boilermakers. And a shot and into the net for Purdue. First goal of the game. A nice kick there from Matthews. Finding her teammates in the middle and getting the ball behind Kozel. Something that does not happen often. So when it does, there is reason to celebrate. There are not a lot of times Kozel finds the ball behind her net. And the Spartans are a little bit stunned in the first 15 minutes as we take a look at this corner. Great placement and just nobody there to pick her up. A little unlucky there. A nice goal there by Purdue. Nicole Cavazia has been a strong force for the Boilermakers today and throughout this entire season as the Spartans are going to start fighting now to get back. It was just a lack of communication. Kozel having a few words with her defenders after that goal saying, hey, it's all right. Maybe just a little unlucky on that corner as it was Purdue's first look on goal all day. The Spartans are going to be ready to fight back now. We can already see that aggression coming out. Gaynor passes it to Sargent. Sargent looking up, trying to find Kaler, but that's going to get stopped by Roy for Purdue. White taking it, faking out her defender. 
as she starts to head up the field. Again, trying to look for either Cox or DeBow there, and it's going to get stopped by Woodbeck and kicked out of bounds on the Spartans, and Purdue is going to get the ball in. Purdue goal just kind of silencing the Spartan crowd today as MSU needs to retain their composure and not start diving into these plays. Spartans definitely a little bit rattled after seeing that ball go right into the net. Just miscommunication there, and they're going to try to get it back, but they need to always keep that composure. Getting rattled is the last thing you're going to want to do. Kick up, we have some players slipping on the field, just a little bit wet here in East Lansing today as Diodotti takes it up. And a great one-two combination there as Debo will look to feed her forwards and take it herself. Just off tar target there by Debo. Good shot. Debo knowing she can get some of those shots on goal, being such a strong player for the Spartans this year. Sadly, that shot just a little off to the side of the net as the frustrated Spartans have to retreat back as Kimball is going to kick the ball out for the Boilermakers. And if MSU are going to look for the equalizer, they just need to keep better possession in the midfield and maybe slow it down if the opportunity is not there. And that's what makes DeVoe so dangerous. If she doesn't like any of her options, especially with Sargent or any of the through balls not working, she has the ability to take it there for herself and put one on goal. Spartan struggling a bit at the circle now as they're going to pass it back to Kozel. And Gardner is going to take it up. Going in to Boilermaker territory now. DeBeau fighting there, trying to get open for her teammates as Cox and White go back and forth there. And a big kick up, trying to find Courtney Kaler, but she has two Purdue defenders on her, and Purdue's going to kick that out for a Michigan State throw-in. Cox throwing it in now for the Spartans. Right to DeBeau. DeBeau with a strong kick over, trying to find Cameron Evans, her go-to, but it was no good as the Boilermakers got it out, fighting it out of their zone. The referee will pull that one for a foul. Kohler was kind of knocked hard in the back. It's a dangerous free kick outside the top part of the key for the Spartans as Diodati might look to line it up. She has been taking a lot of the Spartan set pieces so far this season. Instead, the referee says, pull it back. Bit of miscommunication there. Little, little frustrating for Diodati, trying to not let it shake her. She gets ready to reset, take the kick again. In, bouncing right off a Boilermaker. Bouncing off Nicole Kedzia. And def and definitely a design play there by Diodati. A low driven ball, anything can happen. Like Purdue scored off of a miscommunication rebound. Not a bad opportunity for the Spartans as they retain possession. White with the ball now, finding DeBeau, that big threat, passing it out to Sargent, who was all alone in the corner, right back to the middle. Looked like she was trying to go for maybe DeBeau, but it is no good as Roy is going to take it out herself and Kozel is going to stop it bouncing off. Gracie Dunaway now fighting with Kozel herself. Kozel is going to kick it out so she can get back to her net. Kozel getting a little rattled there. As she is normally playing sweeper keeper able to collect those balls that some teams will play long. Michigan State getting the ball out of their zone now as Sargent takes it up. Debo asking for it. Sargent instead opts it herself. And Sargent, another one of those players that was really frustrated against Iowa and not being able to bring it down the field like she 
Debeau now with Cox going back and forth there a little bit, trying to get some momentum up. Pass out to Gaynor. Going way out to the corner there. And a great look by the Spartans. Beautiful setup there, confusing the Purdue defense. Took it, and now the Spartans are have gotten that equalizer. The fans are riled up. The Spartans are riled up. It's looking to get a lot more competitive. Tied just 19 minutes in. And a good shot from Gracie Dunaway. Cutting back on that right foot. Kozel with the save. Looked like it was going top left corner. Kozel using her height as well. Not letting that one get in the back of the net. Cox with it now. Kozel trying to talk to her defense in the back. Spartan's gonna send it up. Kaler rushing to get that there. Fighting with Sabrina Blount. And it's gonna get kicked out on Michigan State. Throw in for Purdue. And credit to the Spartans for their ability to use their depth to their advantage. We talk a lot about Cameron Evans and Lauren DeBow, but Cameron Evans, what makes her so dangerous is not just getting on the end of goals, but also creating them for her teammates along with DeBow. And that speaks to their depth as a team. Diodati throwing it in for the Spartans, but it is going to get taken over right away by the Boilermakers, but kicked out for another throw in for Michigan State to try to get something going down on the offense and get out of the middle of the field. Gardner's gonna go up. Nice look right there to DeBow, but she had a Boilermaker defender right behind her. Spartans maintaining possession here. DeBow with it now, looking for that pass. Finding Gaynor out there. Gaynor looking into the middle. And MSU moving the ball really well side to side. As Reagan Cox will take it down line. A really, really good look there. Cox getting in, finding Celia Gaynor, who just couldn't get it in off her head. And then a rebound there by DeBow. That again, like DeBow shot earlier today, just a little bit off target there. As we take another look at this great cross in. No foul there, and Debo just not being able to get her laces on that one as it goes well wide of the goal. Spartan still on the attack, looking for a second. Sargent with it now, crossing right over to Debo, who hops up, just skimmed off a little bit. And a nice, nice shot there again by Gaynor, but just went a little bit over. Just leaning back a little too much on that, not being able to put her foot on it like she probably would have wanted to. Looking for the near side of the net. A good look and a good pass, though, from Emerson Sargent across the box as the Spartans still on the attack. Gaynor heading it up, being followed by Boudreaux tight on her. The Purdue defense is staying on the Spartans today. And White. Purdue having all their players back. Sargent trying to get it there as Cox has it now. Going to get kicked out on Sydney Duarte for a Spartan throw in. And credit to Michigan State, not losing their confidence going forward, taking their defenders on one-on-one -on -one where they have a lot of success and where they're finding a lot of success and making those adjustments going into this game. As we now enter the second part of this first half. Gaynor with it now, trying to outrun her defender as she finds her sister. And right off the post, that shot. The Spartans looking for their second, hitting just the, just the corner of the net right there. And I think it was Celia Gaynor who had a Far look on goal, yep. And just 
puts her laces on it in top right corner, few inches from the net as it hit the post. Purdue fortunate that no MSU player was able to get on the second ball. Looks like a few players going down a bit. Slick field conditions today after a little bit of rain right before game started. Clear skies now as Purdue's going to get the ball. And it's been all Celia Gaynor so far working defensively and on the offense for the Spartans. Getting on the end of headers like that one. Out on the Spartans for another Purdue throw in. As we have a substitution for Purdue, seeing Abigail Roy Purdue coming off the field. In number 16, Hannah Lapierre. Hannah Lapierre stepping on for the Boilermakers as that's going to get kicked out and a throw in for the Spartans. And Purdue, although a young team, they have to maintain their composure if they're going to stay in this game not allowing MSU to get more and more opportunities on net. It's fine keeping them passing it back with their defenders. They just need to show a little bit more urgency when MSU gets into the final third and kind of cut those through balls off. In the back now, White looking for a teammate. Finds Gaynor out there. Right to Kaler who gets that ball kicked out by Purdue. Michigan State still fighting for it, and White's going to come out with it. Back to Kaler again, tips off and gets kicked out. Looks like Budish got outrun there, frustrated with herself a little bit, thinking she had a way to the goal and just got beat out by her Spartan defenders. It's Gaynor with it now coming up. Passing back to Kozel, trying to communicate with her team. And at times, Purdue almost dropping back to a 4-4-2, it looks like, keeping their defensive shape. Gainer with it now. Evans looking for the call, not going to get it. Ball back to Kozel. And Purdue just frustrated with that ball. They had the time to build it up there. Not really sure why they wanted to play a long ball. Definitely getting a bit frustrated as the Boilermakers are trying to make something happen for the offense, but Michigan State is not letting them through. Haas are telling him his team to get a little more forward, take the space, use it. A nice stop attempt there by Duarte, who's playing some aggressive defense today. And a bad giveaway there by Diodati. As Purdue will look to capitalize on this one, slowing it down, playing it back to their defenders, waiting until they have numbers up top. Woodbeck, Debeau chasing around, trying to get that ball back. She's hungry for it today. And a nice header there by Reagan Cox, and the Spartans will stay on the attack as Sargent's rushing up, tricks out her defender, and goes for maybe a pass there, was maybe looking for Cameron Evans, who was not there, and that's going to be a goal kick for Purdue. I think it might have even, was supposed to be a look on net, as Sargent just wasn't able to wrap her foot around that and get a little bit more bend on it. And if she did, it probably could have been a great shot on goal. Just needed to position her body a little better on that one as she cut back on her left foot. The goal kick is out, and the Spartans staying on the attack as the Gainer sisters keep the ball in possession. White keeping it in the back. Finding Diodati coming up now with a defender hot on her trail. Cam Evans there fighting as it looks like Gainer went down for just a second. Kept back up, and Budish is going to go on some fast attacks, slipping there a little bit. The Spartans keeping the ball, finding Debo there in the middle, but with two defenders on her, the Boilermakers are going to keep it. Just trying to get it out of their zone Emily to get Matthews. an attack started. Emily Matthews with a good idea, just a poor execution on the long ball to her forward. Debo taking it up now. A nice pass there to Kaler, looking to get back to Debo, but Duarte got it out in time for her team. 
This looks like Cam Evans goes down again, getting a little frustrated, but no calls. Nice save there by Abby Gardner, making sure the ball stays in her team's possession. But Sydney Duarte with it now, rushing up, no one on her. Three on three situation with three Spartans trailing. A nice look there to Budish, trying to get her footing around it. A good idea there by Budish, but that ball is just gonna be off target. Clearly frustrated at that sequence of play. She maybe had the space to do it, but she could have opted to play it back to her midfielders and just waited for a bit more help. She cut it back on her right foot and just high and wide of the net. As Koza watched that one so soar past her goal. As we have a substitution there, Hall coming in for the Boilermakers. Excuse me, Allen. Oh, two Purdue substitutions. Gracie Dunaway coming off, Olivia Hall stepping on, and Boudreau, Sydney, Sydney Boudreau also coming off as Zoe Allen stepping on. The Boilermakers trying to change it up, see if some different players on the field could get them a little bit of momentum. And I think for Purdue, Emily Matthews has to see a little bit more of the ball. We've talked about her. We did, and Matthews, freshman year against Michigan State, had three shots, leading her team on assists. She has definitely been a star attacker for the team, leading that attack, but not seeing much from Matthews today, hasn't seen the ball too much, and if Purdue wants to get something going, Matthews may be the person they have to look for. As Nicole Kedzia. Getting it out now. Matthews has the ball, looking for her options, waiting for a play to develop. Gaynor getting that pass that Matthews intended for LaPierre. And the Spartans are going to stay on and the Gaynor attack. just interrupting the sequence of play. Both Celia and Justina Gaynor have been on the Boilermakers tail, making sure that their team's getting the ball. Probably a bit of annoyance to the Boilermakers there, as it looks like we have another Purdue substitution and Sydney Duarte is coming off now. Also Michigan State substitution as Reagan Dalton steps on the field for freshman Courtney Kaler. Sydney Hunt now on the field for the Boilermakers replacing Sydney Duarte, who's been an defensive powerhouse today. As Purdue throwing it in. And Budish goes down. Going to be the ball for Purdue. Maybe a chance to get something started here for the Boilermakers. Keeping it in the back. And a nice kick up. Stopped by Gaynor, not letting any balls get by her today. A nice look up as Hunt is going to try to go for it. But her shot saved by Kozel. Kozel's going to throw it out. And Emily Sargent with the time and space. Finds Gaynor, slides a little bit. Just a little too much on that ball. She had the idea to break out fast. Maybe didn't have the numbers. Definitely a good look there. Just a little, little too much speed on that ball for Gaynor to get it. Some crafty footwork there by Emily Matthews. Allen now fighting with Evans. Keep that ball, Michigan State defense trying their best keep ball away. Emily Matthews knows a lot about some of these Michigan players, a product of the 
Nationals club team where four of MSU's players have also come out of. Fighting now for that ball as it is kicked out on Michigan State and Purdue will get the throw in. Purdue looking to start something here while they are on in a longer territory. throw there. Out again on Michigan State. Another throw in for Purdue. Another long throw right to the middle as Kedzia takes it, long kick out. Gonna be stopped there by the Spartans. Evans gets it back to Dalton now, who would want to take it up, got double teamed and said she's gonna play it safe and move it back. And it speaks to Michigan State's depth on the bench putting Dalton in, who didn't see any action in their last matchup against Iowa. Now in for the Spartans, hoping to make that bit of a difference up top. Dalton looking, getting double teamed again there. As Matthews is going to take it, getting chased down by the Spartans and Bria Scrotenberg in now for the Spartans, but it was out. Going to be a throw in for Purdue. Scrotenberg gets it, finds Gaynor, gets it to Sargent. Sargent trying to run, outrun, couldn't exactly do it, gets it out to Cox, then to Gardner there. A bit of back and forth here from the Spartans and the Boilermakers as the Spartans try to stay on the attack. Nice look there to Evans, but Blount kicks it out for the Boilermakers. And Justina Gaynor again showing that grit within the midfield, keeping the ball and retaining the ball for the Spartans, not allowing Purdue to get on the end of it. Evans goes down again. As Scrotenbor gets back, being chased by Zoe Allen. As the Spartans try to get something going and settle themselves down a little bit. Scrotenbor out to Sargent. Sargent by herself a little bit, has some time. Looking out, a nice look there to Cox. A great through ball, just kind of a poorer execution than Reagan Cox probably would have wanted. As MSU will make another substitution. And Cox knows she's so much more capable of getting in a better cross. As Evans comes out there, running a little slowly. She's taken a few tumbles today. Struggling just a little bit up at the top as Mally Illig comes in for Evans. The freshman from Troy. Boilermakers with it now. As Hunt takes it, fighting. A bit of a shove there it looked like from Sargent, but no calls. It's Debo with it now. Back to Cox, who had that nice shot before. Looked for Kaler, who's back in the game now for the Spartans. And not a bad cross from Cox. Not at all. Kaler's been struggling there just a little bit in the middle. Some nice crosses her way, but just can't get to them with that really, really tight Boilermaker defense as the Boilermakers switch it up again, adding some new players to the field as true freshman Brooke Harala steps on for the Boilermakers. And the kick out from Kimball. Ball out and the Spartans are gonna throw it in. It's Diodotti sends it out. Able to keep that one in. A nice save there. Double teamed. As Illig gets double teamed there. And great work from the freshman. Again, speaking to Hossler's confidence and being able to put players that maybe didn't see any action in the last matchup, now seeing and possibly being a difference maker in this one today. As the corner kick is getting set up by Diodotti.
kick out. Finding right in the middle there. But Purdue's going to get it out. Looks like a Purdue player down on the field, getting back up. As, as Gardner gets it out to Diodati. Diodati rushing forward. And Purdue just growing increasingly frustrated, not being able to hang on to the ball for longer than four or five passes to string along. Matthews there, definitely frustrated, seeing more of the back of the field today than she may want to. As the Spartans keep that possession and keep fighting. Pass up. Cox going to get it if she can save it in time. Fighting with defenders. And a great defensive work by Cox. Just being able to shepherd that one out. Letting that one go. Finding Diodati on that left-hand side. Taking her defender one-on-one. -on -one. See a lot of one-on-one -on -one and a lot of one on, two on one action over in that corner of the field today. And the referee pulls that one for a foul. Diodati just being able to take her defenders on so well and getting forward for the Spartans. As the as ball they is out. Opt not to set up for a free kick. Serves that one in. A really nice look there from Bria Schrotenborg. Just couldn't get it. T big header and an easy jump up for Kimball for a save. As we enter in this last five minutes of the first half, Diodati with a nice win on the 50-50, getting her team going. Kaler rushing there, beating out some defenders, but then the ball kicked out by Lauren Holleran for the Boilermakers. And the Spartans are going to try to set something up again. And Purdue Boilermakers second in the Big Ten with four and a half saves per game, holding the Spartans to one goal so far this half. And the Spartans nice. know that all this possession doesn't mean anything without another goal. Nice save there by Cox. I'm getting off, but DeBoe loses it to Boilermaker defenders. Brooke Hollera there coming in, the freshman fighting against the Spartan, the Spartan pros. And I think that's the beauty of this Big Ten play so far is that even with a team like MSU holding possession for a lot of this first half, it's still a 1-1 draw so far in this first half. Allie Mayer coming in now on the back. Chris Grotenberg kicks it up. No Spartan players there, though, as the ball's going to roll out. And Purdue will get a chance, maybe, if they can just get it out. MSU making a string of substitutions, including Labovich, who has switched from a, more of a defensive midfielder role to an attacking one. We'll see if she can create any opportunities for her forwards up top, or maybe even take one herself as well. Fighting there. Little bit of a slide from Dalton, losing it. And Michigan State just putting two or three bodies around that player, winning the ball back immediately, wanting to retain possession, not allowing Purdue to even have a taste of that final third. Right here, keeping it in the back, Michigan State. It's Allie Marin. To Sargent. Sargent's going to take it up. She's been so great at just getting that ball up right to Labovich with a quick pass back to Dalton, who finds DeBoe with a little bit of footwork there to pass it back. And MSU has been really good at checking in and checking out so far this half, being able to turn. Bit of a trip there on Sargent. No call, though. And the Boilermakers are going to rush up, try to get something going in these la this last minute. And Purdue and a just a little slow at getting numbers up top. You see Michigan State getting three, four more players in back. And right there, Purdue losing it. Something we mentioned before, 
the Spartan defense has been so strong and just a smallest slip up there when you have the ball and the Spartans will find that opportunity and take it away. And that's exactly what they did as the Spartans, Marin's gonna run it up. And you can see it in Purdue's way of play. They have the right ideas. It's just the execution that has been just a little off so far this afternoon. They've been really good at the one, two balls, just not being able to get a third or fourth pass on as referee plays There's advantage. Bit of a struggle there's Diodati now rushing, beating her attacker, finding Kozel. Kozel's gonna kick it out and find a bow. Under a minute left to play in this half. Spartans rushing up the field as DeBeau finds Labovich. Tricking out her defender there with a nice pass over to Cox. Cox a sergeant. Sergeant has a chance. Going through the middle. Can't get anything going there as the Boilermakers kick it out. Pass in to Dalton. Dalton looking there, finding Cox and Illig. The Boilermakers yeah, keep it out. Yeah. Marin rushes up. Just a few Seven, seconds left. Six, five, Marin sends it, four, three, two, but it is kicked out. One, one. And Purdue holds on, keeping it to a 1-1 match here at DeMartin Stadium. Very aggressive start from both teams on this play. Getting ready to get this second half underway here at DeMartin Stadium. And Purdue start off with possession. I'll be curious to see if they come out with any major tactical changes or what kind of tone they want to set for this second half as MSU was really successful in getting a lot of players, a lot of different players involved in the attack. Scrotenboard passing it back to Kozel who gets it back up to Ali Marin, keeping in the back, letting the Spartans offense set up. Kozel finding Illig out on the side. Illig gets a nice big pass up to Evans, but Evans loses it to her Purdue defender. Pass back to Illig as Purdue's gonna keep it, and the ball is gonna go out. And good pressure from Cameron Evans, keeping the ball down here, not letting Purdue have that outlet pass. Ball goes right back out again. Purdue defense definitely coming in strong. Cameron Evans fighting hard with her opponents. She does a really good job at closing this space, not allowing the defenders to get any more looks, forcing them to go inside a place they really don't want to go. As Cox will chase that one down. Cox gets it, Cox gets it up. Kaler with a nice shot, just a little off center there. A good look by the freshman, Courtney Kaler, just a little bit off center from the goal. MSU doing a really good job at keeping players at the top of the 18-yard box. As we take another look here, in a great position, Kaler was just not being able to really get behind it. A Kimball nice half volley from her. Kimball still in goal. Kicks it out, but the Spartans are going to maintain possession as that ball is going to be out on Purdue for a Michigan State throw-in. Cox with it. Finds DeBeau all by herself with a long pass back to Marin. Giving the offense a chance to set up, finding Cox out on the side. A nice through pass rolls out. Intended for DeBeau, just wasn't able to get on the end of it and make that kind of bending run like Cox wanted her to. A rare miscue from them too. They found a lot of success on that right hand side Attacking Purdue's defenders. Kimball setting up her kick. Nice long kick all the way out to center field as Budish is going to find it. 
The Spartans are going to hold on, though, with a pass from White to Ali Marin. Gainer fighting there. Scrotenbor with it now, bringing it up for the Spartans. Finding Gainer, fighting past her defense. Really, really aggressive play from and Justina Grainer today. A nice ball outside to Samantha White. Crosses it in with her left. And a good clear from the Purdue defense as MSU will look to reset. A nice clear from Matthews, a player who coming into this game looked to be a strong attacker but is showing some strong defensive skills after her team hasn't seen the ball. Matthews did get a si an assist on Purdue's goal today and she's still leading her team with five assists now for the season. A save there, but the ball was loose for a second. But the ref is going to blow the whistle. Spartan fans and Wickes not happy. Wickes arguing that the goalkeeper didn't have possession and she had every right to go after that ball as we take another look here. And she props to her for following it up. And I'm not sure she did have full possession, but the ref argued that she did and called the foul. Wickes with a nice pass to Debo. Debo looking now. Goes for it herself, but a nice look there by Debo and a nice bounce in. But Kimball got the save there. Wickes was there trying to maybe get the rebound after that little bounce. But Kimball held on to it for the Boilermakers. The Purdue goalkeeper just looking a little shaky in these opening minutes, something you really don't want to see if you're Purdue, hoping to get something going while maintaining a 1-1 lead, 1-1 tie, excuse me. The Spartans will be looking to attack the Purdue goalkeeper if she does stay a little unsteady in the back of the net. A nice kick out for the Boilermakers. Man is going to get it, but she goes down instead. That looks like it's going to be a call. Kind of an awkward fall for her. Stays up. As Scrotenbor with it now. Out to Marin on the side. Spartans ready to get something going on the attack. The kick out that went just a little past Marin and back into Boilermaker possession as Budish is going to take it and goes down. And ref saying no foul, it was all ball and a fair tackle as Cameron Evans brings it down with the back of her leg, feeds Bo it through. A nice look there. Budish we see just getting up, kind of gingerly running aside. That last fall took her down a little bit. A good header there and kicked out by Purdue defenders. Cameron Evans just not being able to bring it down like she would have wanted to get a shot off, but a great look from Gaynor and a great look from Evans, both in a right position, right time scenario. If we take a look here, Gaynor was asking for it, was able to get the header and the left foot just kind of failed Cameron Evans in too big of a touch. Definitely a good look there by Gaynor and Evans just couldn't get that touch in with those two defenders there. Definitely something to be looking for. Evans hungry to make something happen for the Spartans. Nice header from Debo as Wickes fights off her defender and saves the ball from going out on the Spartans. A little bit of a trip right there. Instead, the Spartans will have their fourth corner of the day, hoping to capitalize on this one as they've taken 13 shots so far in today's matchup compared to Purdue's three. Another corner kick, Purdue defense. The team in general looking a little bit flustered. A little bit tired out as Debo is going to kick it out to Ali Marin. Long kick over inside to Wickes and it goes in. Spartan goal. A great look there by Ali Marin right across. Gets it to Ali Marin and sends it right to Jordan Wickes across. Really nice goal there for the Spartans. Some beautiful momentum. And credit to Allie Marin for 
getting a good ball into her teammate, and that is why Wickes was able to start this second half, and Hostler having the confidence to put her in and start the second half, even though not starting in the first half, able to be that difference maker. Michigan State up two to one. Th that goal definitely gave Michigan State some momentum and some more confidence as we keep getting underway here in this second half. As Kozel keeps it back now, playing it slow, letting the clock run to Allie Mairn. And Purdue so far have been really good at maintaining their maintaining their composure, not getting too frustrated at the game of play, even though they're not in control a lot of the times. They've been fine with sitting back and being def in a defensive shape, but they're going to need to start going forward looking for an equalizer at some point of the game, which might lead a couple open spots and spaces for MSU to start attacking. Kaler just had a nice pullback there to save the ball from getting out of her possession with a look to White. Gaynor now finding her sister running up through Purdue defenders, finding Cam Evans all by herself, quickly finding... A really good look there, almost a second goal there for Wickes in just a few minutes time, but a good look and a good save by Kimball for Purdue. A really good look there, Evans finding Wickes alone in the box. And Wickes, if she just kept that ball a little more down and not led, not let the Purdue goalkeeper kind of get a handle on it, she might have had a second one. This referee will pull that one back for a foul near the center circle having a few words with Cecilia Gaynor. Lauren Holleran setting up the ball for the Boilermakers here. The Boilermakers have a rare chance on the attack. Gonna look to make something happen. A long ball in, not a bad one. But the Spartans Keep it as Lauren DeBow kicks it out for a Purdue throw in. The first substitution of this half will come from Purdue. Entering the game for Purdue, number 18, Abigail Roy. Abigail Roy coming back in, started the game for the Boilermakers, replacing Hannah LaPierre. In a very offensive minded attack, maybe. Offensive substitution, excuse me, for Purdue. Hoping to get something going in that final third. Good ball control there. Skrotenborg kicking it out, though. Purdue throw in as the Spartan defense are setting up. Holleran gets ready for the throw in. And a quick kick out from Samantha White. Evans winning the header, just not finding anybody to win that second ball as Purdue retains possession. Evans applying a lot of pressure. Nice give and go there, just wasn't able nice to find Nice slide it. there by Ali Mairn to get the ball out and stop Kayla Budish as she was making her way up toward the net. A throw in now. Duarte has it. Had a kind of a poor clear there, able to recover. Debo with the ball. Building out of the back something that the Spartans haven't done a whole lot this season. A nice save there from Purdue, keeping the ball from heading out of bounds. But does not last too long. As it is a humid one, 60 degrees here at DeMartin Stadium. Wind about 10 miles per hour. Not too bad of conditions besides these scattered rains. But so far the rain has held up for the players. Nothing like a few weeks ago, the Spartans played in a full downpour. Against Colorado, that one was a brutal one. Just the slight delay, but Spartans able to use those conditions maybe to their advantage and they know as well as anybody else that both teams have to play in these conditions. Absolutely, today's rain held off for both teams. Just some scattered showers. White with it now to Skrotenbohr. Keep it in the back. Some Marin with it now. And MSU happy to keep three defenders back. It's working really well for them. And a nice kick up, Cam Evans with it. 
getting beat out by her Purdue defender. And it was not a bad ball to Evans. Just wasn't able to get a touch on it. And she should have in order to beat her defender. Defender was just first to the ball. Blount for Purdue got up there fast and beat Evans out. White with it now. Just trying to save the ball. Touch. Just hoping to get on the end of that. Just let it roll past her as it will be a Purdue goal kick. Kimball sets it up. Michigan State dropping back just a little bit more. So the kick is out. And a nice header there from Roy for Purdue. But the Spartans maintain possession as Kaler gets it to DeBow. DeBow racing up, trying to find Wickes there, and Wickes can't save it. Just a little too heavy there from DeBow as the ball goes back out for another goal kick from Purdue. And Hostler just a little unimpressed at those last two plays. He knows the Spartans are a little bit more disciplined than that, letting the ball get away from them. Just taking a couple heavy touches there. As Cam Evans gets that goal kick, tries to make something happen, but it is kicked back out by Purdue defenders. Michigan State fighting. MSU just need to slow play down and get possession and keep their touches a little closer to them, not allowing Purdue to get a throw in or string a couple passes together. Matthews fighting, showing some of that leadership on the attack that she's been known to have for the Boilermakers, but the Spartans keep it as Gaynor heads it Gets it to Cam Evans. Just a little too heavy on that kick, but Cam Evans gets it in time. Trying to get past her defender. And she always looks to go on that right foot, kind of cutting back. Sometimes it works, and she's been able to adjust so far in this game of not being solely dependent on attacking that left side and then cutting it back with her right, finding her more open players instead. Allie Marin bringing it up. Finding Gaynor in the middle. Trying to rush past, gets double teamed there, trying to keep hold of the ball. And that's going to be a foul called. And that was all Gaynor and her tenacity to stick with the play, going past one, two, three Purdue defenders and just right on the top of her foot, no ball. And that's gonna be a foul all day, right at the top of the box in a dangerous position for the Spartans. Absolutely, definitely not a situation Purdue wants themselves in right now. Gaynor showing that tenacity, showing that ferociousness against her defenders, not giving up and drawing that foul out. Five-man wall is created for Purdue. Diodati or maybe Scrotenborg will take the shot. Looks like Scrotenborg gets the shot, and it is good. Bria Scrotenborg with a goal on the free kick for the Spartans, bringing the score three to one now here at DeMartin Stadium. And completely around the wall, the five-man wall set up, supposed to protect that near side post and Scrotenboard just bends it around past the wall and past the Purdue goalkeeper. A really, really good bend there from Scrotenboard right past that wall. Right on. Michigan State with the ball. Keeping it back, comfortable with giving it to Kozel now with this new comfortable lead. Marin with the ball heading up with a nice kick out. Looks like she was trying to find Cox, but it was stopped. Sargent gets in there, but Purdue manages to hold on. And a nice through ball there. Right to Duarte. Nice stop by Allie Marin. 
And an athletic save by Lauren Kozel. A really, really good look there. That was Emily Matthews, that big Purdue attacker looking for that shot. Keeping the Spartans in the game. As we take another look, a great shot and a great look by Matthews. Really good save there by Kozel, getting her whole body into that dive, stopping that ball. Not going to let Purdue get that chance. And a great reactive save as Purdue have a corner. Matthew setting up the corner kick now. And a nice grab out of the air by Kozel, not letting the Boilermakers even get a shot. Something she's able to do so well is command her inner box and reach for those high balls that maybe some goalkeepers are might be timid to go out and get. And she wins her team a free kick. And MSU not looking to slow things down and get back into their defensive shape. They are in search of another one, which some teams you'll see after they score their second or third goal might sit back and they're happy to defend it till the end. But MSU might be in search of a fourth one. Michigan State has definitely not been seen as a team to slow down. They like to keep the momentum and do everything they can to remain a forward powerhouse on the attack. Keeping it in the back right now, though, White with it. Finding Courtney Kaler, fighting with her two defenders now. Getting some footwork out of there to Gaynor. Gaynor gets it up to Wickes, fighting off two defenders, three now. And finds Justina Gaynor out there. Out to Cox on the side. Cox using some footwork, trying to trick up her defender. Passes it back to Gaynor. And Gaynor. a nice pass through the legs to Cox. Very good through pass. Cox trying to keep it in. And ball goes out and Happy. stays in Michigan State possession. Happy to let that one go for a corner. Great job from Reagan Cox to keep that one in the final third. And again, corners where we saw the goal from Jordan Wickes. As we have a quick substitution here for Michigan State, Cam Evans coming off. And Mally, Maggie Illig comes back on for the Spartans as we set the corner kick up. Samantha White with the kick. Kick getting out of the box. Wick is trying to get to it. Purdue kicking it out. Allie Marin finding it. Tries to get it out to Wickes again, but rolls out of bounds and will be a throw in for the Boilermakers. Fighting for it now. Gainer, ball goes out. Tried to keep that one in and try to get something going up top. Unsuccessful was Abigail Roy. White gets it in to Gainer. Both go down. And Gracie Dunaway comes up with the ball. Referee pulls that one back for a foul. Yeah, there was a jersey tug. Celia Gaynor confused as to what happened, but she was the player involved. Excuse me, Justina Gaynor. As Bit she of argument shoved, there with the ref. Shoved her, ref let it continue, pulled it back when he saw that Purdue had no more op attacking opportunity. And she will be booked for the first yellow card of the day. But fr Justina Gaynor walking away from the ref, a bit frustrated there. Teammates trying to help her shake it off and get prepared. Not a bad tactical foul there. Happy to keep Purdue at the center field. So we take another look and just got her left arm extended a little too much. Blount kicking it in. Reagan Cox trying to keep the ball away from Lauren Kozel as the Spartans keep possession. And Purdue getting numbers back right away, something they struggled with a little bit in the first half, but MSU forced to play it back as Samantha White will survey her options. White's coming up. Looks for Kaler. And a bad giveaway by White. It's Matthews fighting for it now, getting pushed out. The ball stays. Pass back to Lauren Kozel. Getting a little bit of pressure from Budish there. 
And Matthews just clearly frustrated on that right-hand side, not having a lot of outlets that she can pass it to. Matthews has not seen the attacking game as much as she probably would like to during this matchup and usually sees herself right by the goal and has been seeing herself getting pushed back into more of a defensive role today as the Spartans have really maintained possession for most of this match. Matthews goes down. Budish with the ball now, passing it across to Dunaway. Dunaway versus White. Tries to get past her. Bounce off White and out. As the Spartans get set up to prepare for the corner kick. Purdue hoping to get something going as we are now halfway through this second half. Matthews setting up corner kick for her team. Right in, tipped off Kozel's hand and out. And I think that kick just had a little bit too much of a bend on it. Referee saying that it hit the post and went completely out. No touch from Kozel as it will be a Spartan goal kick. Sometimes those corners are a little tricky, especially for the ARs to catch, but the AR saw that it completely went out. Have a substitution as Kelly Severini steps in for the Michigan State Spartans. For Reagan Cox, Coach Hostler trying to get some players onto the field now. Scrotenbor with it. Spartans playing back, making sure they have nice controlled passes. Scrotenbor, Kozel going back and forth here. Pass back up. Dunaway coming in for the Spart on the Spartans as White is going to take it up, she rushing up the field now. Taking the time and space, feeding it through. Nice look to Illig. Illig tries to get it across. Nice look by White, but a really nice save by A Roy Ab Abigail Roy, excuse me, throwing her body in front of that ball. And the game has kind of opened up in a way with Purdue looking to attack. And MSU will have to keep an eye out for where they leave those open spaces as they grow a little bit out of their shape in search of a second one here today. Scroton board to Gaynor. Gaynor's trying to get control of that pass, was a little heavy. And Purdue's gonna take that ball away from Michigan State. It's Woodbeck with the ball now, getting stopped by Sergeant. Sergeant Woodbeck kind of fighting for it now. As Wickes comes out with it, going to beat the two defenders on her with a pass to Illig, but a save from defender. Sabrina Blount. Wickes struggling right there with the two defenders on her as the ball's going to get up to Emily Matthews and she is going to take it as far as she can. With a lot of pressure from the Spartans. Gets it back. A little back and forth right here in the middle between the Spartans and the Boilermakers. And Purdue able to keep it in and keeping an attack alive as well it will be a Purdue throw. Definitely some intensity coming from Purdue, desperate to keep those pass sequences going and keep the ball in their possession as long as they can, trying to get some more shots on goal. Michigan State, six shots on goal for today, only three for Purdue. Looks like Matthews is down. And she's been getting the brunt of those physical matchups all game long, just trying to create opportunities for her team in any way she can. And we'll see what she does with this free kick here. Got tripped up by Kelly Severini, who just came in for the Spartans. Matthew setting up. Chance to maybe get another point on for the Boilermakers. and a nice head out by the Spartans as Courtney Kaler is going to take it, gets tripped up. Allie Marin sets up. The referee calling a pretty consistent game and the fouls he's seen so far. 
Ali Man with it getting chased down by Budish. Michigan State controlling that ball. Skrotenborg with it now. Keeping it in the back. Pass to Mairn. Taking all the way back to Kozel. As Michigan State's trying to stay calm and collected right now. Budish fighting to try and see an open chance to get that ball. Not finding anything. Looking a little, little worn down, a little tired. As Skrotenborg takes it up. Long kick. And a nice long ball, just unable to get on the end of it. Severini fighting now to get that with Maggie Illig. The Boilermakers keep possession, but it is going to be kicked out. And a Michigan State throw in. Taking a look here at Purdue's upcoming schedule after this, they head up to Nebraska afterwards, Rutgers, Illinois, Iowa, and Indiana getting right into the grunt of that Big Ten play. Definitely a very aggressive conference to be in for Purdue. Halloran with it now. Kick out, trying to find, trying to find Duarte. And a kick and a stop by Kozel. She is in no rush to take that one. Waiting for the Purdue pressure. Skrotenbor up to Gaynor. Gaynor finding Severini out on the side. She's running it up. A nice pass to Illig. She gets past her defender up. Slipping right through Kimball's hands. Oh, such a good look. But the MSU ball. will take their sixth corner of the day. It was not a bad cross. You could see there, Justina Gaynor high-fiving her teammate. Just wasn't able to get in front of her defender like she wanted to. Definitely a good look there in Michigan State, setting themselves up for another corner. Samantha White gets ready to take the kick. Nice kick all the way across. A nice header there, but stopped by Kimball. Looked like Wickes tried to take that and didn't get an easy catch there by Kimball. Trying to replicate the success of the goal that was scored off of a bouncing header. Just unsuccessful this time around. As Purdue unable to string together a couple passes as they look to attack here. Bouge with it now, trying to shove off Sargent, who's playing some high defense Severini and Duarte. Severini steals that ball away, gets it to Gaynor, finds Sargent. Off to Wickes, a bit of a slide there. And a nice slide tackle there to break up the sequence of play. A good look from Nicole Kedzia. Got to think Wickes was in if she had the ball. She'll look to take her defender one-on-one. -on -one. Matthews getting that ball. Severini applying the pressure. Long kick out. Kozel's going to take that. Budish coming up quick. Kozel dumping it right out to Samantha White. Finding Gaynor who's going to go take the ball up for the Spartans. Gets it to Sargent, who has two defenders on her now. Matthews dropping back to cover Gaynor. Passes it up to her sister. Taking it, finding Kaler. And an offside call there. Unfortunate timing as Courtney Kaler almost looked to make something happen for the Spartans right on that onside call, offside call. Right against Michigan State. A tough break for the Spartans. Not a bad through ball there, just unable to time her run. And maybe just a couple seconds sooner and she would have been onside and through. A little frustrated, frustrating play there, but not a bad look and not a bad run.
Gaynor fighting a bit with Matthews. Some issues on the field. Michigan State Spartans looking a little frustrated. Maybe thought that it was a foul on them and said they will take, they'll get the ball. A little bit of confusion there from the field as Scrotenborg gets the ball. Off to Marin. Marin finding Severini sticking out there to the side. Back to Marin who's going to bring it up. Fighting off Budish who has been a very aggressive and persistent player for the Boilermakers today. As Wickes getting off, finding Gaynor in the middle. Could have gotten it, got surrounded by too many players. Unable to turn in time. A so bit of frustration there from her. You see what she was trying to do, kind of turn it on and get it on her right foot, just unable to do so as it goes through defenders. A nice look there, Wickes back to Gaynor again, and the ball just went right over top of Kaylee Kimball in the Purdue net. And you can see some frustration there from Gaynor just trying to get a shot in. As we see here, a great ball in, and just defender, Purdue defender able to stop. And Justina Gaynor comes off the field as Gabby Holler comes in. We see a string of substitutions being made, and we'll look at MSU's upcoming schedule. They take a road trip to Penn State and Maryland before they come back and play Michigan, Indiana, and then take on a very interesting Northwestern squad. Fighting at the middle now, Celia Gaynor. And a bit of a trip there. Michigan State's going to get the ball. As Scrotenborg comes to set it up. And they're in no rush to take this one right now. Just letting the play develop. And if it's there, it's there. And if it's not, they've had no problem pulling it back to their defenders. Something, again, they struggled with a little bit against their matchup in Iowa. Against Iowa, excuse me. And now have kind of grown into this game very well. A little bit of a miscue there. The ball goes out for a Purdue throw-in. Like you're saying, Veronica, Michigan State has no issue holding on to that ball, letting the players in the back settle it. They're, they're not in a rush at all. Purdue, on the other hand, is looking to make something happen. If they can just keep possession, string together just a few passes, something haven't been able to do much for most of this game as the ball gets back to Kozel. Keeps it with Scrotenborg. Purdue players coming up to try to heavily defend in the back. As Hossler said, this is a young Purdue team, so they've still got a lot to figure out. And again, it's a, it's a tough conference to play in, especially if you don't have that figured out, especially this at this point of the season. We're still trying to figure out some tactical decisions on who works the best up top. And, you know, on paper, they play on a 4-3-3, but when they're in their defensive shape, they play in a 4-4-2, kind of struggling to get those outlet passes together as MSU, again, will retain possession. Absolutely, and these young teams finding that chemistry, finding what works and what doesn't. It's hard once you enter in conference play to get that when you're facing some tough opponents in the Big Ten. Marin with the ball now. Fighting off Matthews. Gets it to Severini. Sees a little shove there from Budish, who is still playing very aggressively today. Wickes. And it's five. looks like Holleran are fighting it off. Eight, Reagan, Cox. Reagan Cox is back in the game for the Spartans. And Zivia Labovich back in, saw some action at the end of the first half. Michigan State showing some new players some time on the field. as Labovich, Gardner, Diodati, and Evans all come in for Kaylor, Wickes, White, and Scrotenbor. So we take another look here, just frustration play there. K 
kick in from Purdue. They're going to send it back to Kimball first. Try to get settled. Kimball looking for someone to pass to. Finds Budish out there. Gets it to Allen. Michigan State not letting anyone through. And that's kind of been the story of the day for the Boilermakers, having those ideas and their good plays just not develop into what they want them to be and not getting that second or third pass together, especially in the final third, MSU breaking it up. Marin looking for Labovich there. It goes a little too far, and Nicole Kedzia gets it for her team. A bit of a possession battle here in the center circle as Holleran and Illig are gonna fight for it. Diodati with it now, getting blocked. Matthews, Purdue with it. And Diodati stopping the pass intended for Dunaway, getting it back to Kozel. See there, she lost possession, but still stayed with her player and then won it back for her team. She looks to get something going here. MSU still pressing and still being heavily involved with the game. Diodati stopping Dunaway from getting anything. Kozel, pass out, meant for Diodati, gets to Dunaway. Diodati saves it, gets it out to Allison Childers that's entered the game for Michigan State. As Matthews stops Childers' pass, tries to get a shot, and is off target going past the goal. As Kozel's getting set up, talking to her team. Spartan settling it there now with the ball, bringing it out. Nice kick up to Illig. Labovich has it now to Childers, and Marin sends it down the field where it's just Illig alone, and the Boilermakers get it back. Childers kind of coming in, trying to get that. She succeeds, gets Diodati, gets the ref there. There, and the referee has to stop play because it hit the referee. New rule says that they have to stop play and restart with the kick. Excuse me, just a drop ball there. Drop ball getting reset. Boilermakers with a chance for possession. Hollerin with it now. Getting it up to Dunaway. Hits Diodotti, gets thrown down a bit. Kind of an unnecessary foul there from Diodotti. You saw what she was trying to do and just not letting the Purdue player not turn and get past her, but an unnecessary free kick. Looks MSU happy to give it there, not any closer. Lauren Holleran for Purdue with the free kick. Maggie Illig watching her as the Spartans set up. Kozel gets set up for this free kick. Ref getting everyone set up as Holleran prepares to take the kick. Purdue players looking to get on the end of this. Is MSU kind of holding a high line. The kick is out. Getting to the middle, few Purdue players trying to get up. And the Spartans are gonna get it out. Maggie Illig being chased down. Gets the ball out of there. Holleran grabs it. A nice slide by Cameron Evans. And that speaks to MSU's tenacity as a team, not letting any ball go through, playing till the very end. Even their forwards getting involved defensively. Diodati and Severini trying to get that ball out with Cox. Budish going for it, saving the ball from getting out on Purdue. And a long kick in. Diodati stopping it. Dunaway goes for it, and it'll be an easy pickup for Kozel. As MSU resets and gets ready. Gabby Holler playing some tight defense 
far back on Ali Marin trying to get it. Marin sends it right back to Kozel. Kozel in no rush to give it up. Nice turn there by Sargent. Find Sargent right to Cox. Getting chased down by Zoe Allen. Cox sends it out looking for Cam Evans and a good save from Cam Evans keeping the ball from going out. Her defender goes down and a nice pass to Labovich who goes, but the ball goes right into the hands of Campbell. Really good idea there from Evans and Labovich to get it in. The kick just went exactly where the goalie wanted it to go, and, and the, Kimball found it. And the placement was there, Labovich kind of clapping. She should have had a little better grip on that. The placement was there, just not so much the power, as MSU will drop back to defend this free kick near the center circle. Just about four minutes left in this match as Purdue gets set up, hollering at the center circle. The Spartans dropping back. Hollerin sets up. Long kick out. A header. Koza will watch that one go from by. From Gabby Hollerin. Right off tar target. Koza watched it go and gets it set up. MJ Andrus steps on the field for the first time today, placing Maggie Illig for the Spartans. Another one of those forwards who brings a lot of power and tenacity up front. Marin with the ball now. Michigan State tries to get it up. Bit of a fight here in the center circle. MJ Andrus getting trying to get past the defenders. Getting involved in the action right away. She was just substituted on. She was itching to get that ball near her and she got her wish and she saw these Purdue defenders taking it on. A great save there from Cox as Gabby Holler Boiler makers tried to get it in. Look at some stats here. Michigan State 19 shots to the Boilermakers 7. We see their dominance on corner kicks. We also see Michigan State's tendency of fouls in this game. A lot, not too much higher, but still pretty high. As a nice grab by Kozel from the corner kick. So we enter in these last few minutes of play and Purdue so far just managed to hold Michigan State to three. Cameron Evans serving where the goalkeeper is. She was way off her line. Evans still with the ball. Evans trying to outrun. Nicole Kedzia trying to get that shot. And Kimball makes a diving save for it, not letting any more Spartan balls behind her net. As the sun is starting to come out here for the final minutes of this game. Labovich gets the ball. Was looking for Cam Evans. Evans didn't see it. And just not being able to make eye contact there on that play. You saw what Labovich was trying to do, and they just weren't on the right page. As Purdue has kind of been in the final third a lot more in these last couple minutes of this second half of this game. Diodotti tries to get it out. A great save by Lauren Kozel as Holler comes in by herself. Diodati tried to stop her, bounced off Holler versus Kozel, and she shut her down. If we take another look here, referee will stop the time. Might be giving a card or at least a talking to to some of the MSU defenders saying no more. And Kozel not even complaining about the call, putting five in the wall immediately, directing her defenders on where to go. with just a little bit over a minute. This match, as the Boilermakers set up, Emily Matthews on the shot. As MSU Wall gets ready and Kozel prepares behind him. Matthews takes the shot, bouncing off Michigan State's wall. Cameron Evans took the brunt of that free kick. That was a hard hit ball. A hard hit to Evans. If we take another look here, I think it was in the back of her head. 
And just right to the back of the head. Evans back up and walking. Definitely a hard hit as the trainer will come out to maybe look for signs of possible playing it safe, getting Evans off the field as Samantha White checks back in. A hard hit. That will sting just for a little bit, but Purdue not being able to make anything out of it as we take a look at the crowd shot. And a great camera shot there by one of our camera people, Sarah Smith. Kozel getting set up. Getting the kick out. There's one minute remaining in the game. Just a minute left one in minute. this game. Lavovich heads it up to MJ Andrus. Andrus continuing to press for this MSU squad. She's been waiting to get in this game, and now that she is here, she is going to fight till the last second as Budish with the ball now for the Boilermakers making a run for it, getting stopped by MSU defenders, having to turn back around and fall back to Zoe Allen. Budish fighting. She has been fighting hard in this game. Certainly, and it's not all negative for Purdue. They'll take a lot away from this game and the fact that they were able to get off of, a again, a fast start like they did against Wisconsin. MJ Andrus finding a chance with the ball, passing it out, trying to go for Labovich there. And Michigan State just hoping to close the game a little better. Just the few final Four, seconds. Labovich with the ball now, just two, going for a kick. One. And that is going to be it. Michigan State Spartans defeat the Purdue Boilermakers three to one. Not all a loss like you just said for the Boilermakers. Definitely gonna come out of this game with a lot, some strong defense, some good shots, just working on getting some passes strung together on the MSU side, playing aggressively today.